In tonight's episode, we recreate one of the most infamous matches in wrestling history, the Montreal Screwjob Survivor Series 1997, Bret Hart vs. Shawn Michaels in a match which will surely never be forgotten. Please join me for great action, great gameplay, and lots of historical commentary as well. Let's get wrestling. So ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're going to be looking at the perhaps most infamous match in the history of the Attitude Era, which is Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hart at Survivor Series 1997. And it's infamous mainly because of this. F that! If Bret doesn't want to do business, then we need to do business for him. This is not famous for being a uh, a great match. This is not famous for being a uh, a uh, like a, a masterclass of technical wrestling or anything like that. It's famous because this is the match where Brett was screwed by Vince McMahon and the WWF. The man who had been in the WWF for uh, close to 20 years, given his kind of life and soul or heart and soul, perhaps, um, to the company, was callously cast aside um, by the, the company. Um, and its owner for the sake of Shawn Michaels' world title reign. Now, the story is a very, very famous one, and if you know it, um, I apologise, but it's a story that has to be told if I'm going to do the history of the Attitude Era. Essentially, Bret Hart um, had been champion. Bret Hart had been a main eventer for coming close to about... Um, four years now, maybe a little bit less, three years in the WWF. He had been um, an extremely reliable member of the roster. He had, uh, of course, won matches, won titles, but also put other people over. Noticeably, uh, in the, the Stone Cold Steve Austin recently uh, was willing to look kind of weak, uh, was willing to um, kind of put other people's needs kind of ahead of his own. Uh, but this was a man with an ego. Let's not let's not whitewash him. This is a man that believed he genuinely was the best there was, the best there is, and the best there ever will be. And he hated Shawn Michaels. And Shawn Michaels hated him. This is a story of two men with two massive egos that seem to take great pleasure in winding each other up constantly. Um, Shawn would... Um, make insults about Bret Hart, about his family, he would accuse him of having affairs live on TV, uh, Bret Hart even pulled out a chunk of Shawn Michaels' hair um, backstage in a kind of a fist fight between the two, both men were kind of sent home to call off at various points, um, but the point the problem was they had such great chemistry together it made for fantastic TV, and in the ring they had always, always had great matches together, even back to their intercontinental battles over um, in ladder matches. I think it was and uh, of course the, the the very famous Iron Man match which I would love to recreate um, at some point for you um, on the channel as Shawn Michaels turns it around by trying to hit a bulldog onto those steel steps outside. Bret Hart of course the stronger of the two the more technically proficient but Shawn Michaels the, the faster the, perhaps the wilier um, but Bret Hart um, for once in his career when, it, when he fights Shawn Michaels is able to be the more physically dominant and uh, come in with the more powerful kind of like slams and, 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 uh, and fists and, and, and things like that. Now this match happened because the WWF was actually losing money. This was um, way before um, Stone Cold really started to turn the ratings down and Vince McMahon was financially concerned. Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels hadn't been the the massive financial draws that people like Hulk Hogan had been back in the day and he was struggling and uh, Bret Hart knew this Bret Hart was obviously wanting to continue wrestling and was concerned that he wasn't going to be able to make enough money in the WWF and had actually started to negotiate with WCW this is with Vince McMahon's full knowledge but Vince McMahon wanted to keep him went to Bret Hart and said hey look I can't afford to pay you millions and millions and millions but I will give you um, a, a high paid contract a couple of million pounds a year um, for, for a long long time 20 year contract or 10 year contract can't remember quite yours but it was a long long term contract and Bret Hart said okay fine I'll stay with you I'm not gonna I won't keep negotiating with WCW I'll stay might not be for quite as much money as I can get right now but uh, over the long term uh, we'll still be making money and I'd rather stay with you this is this is where my heart is um, as Bret Hart whips off Shawn Michaels and back body drops him to the heavens and drops him down and follows up with a bulldog 
Um, and then Vince changes his mind. This contract is offered and then snatched away. Um, the reason's not entirely clear, possibly due to the fact that um, uh, there is not that much money in the WF at this time, but perhaps also Vince wants to go in a different direction. This whole Attitude Era thing, uh, he sees where Stone Cold and Shawn Michaels are creating a more edgy product. Bret Hart didn't really fit the more edgy product. He wasn't uh, kind of someone that lived life on the edge and kind of like with the swearing and all that kind of stuff. Perhaps coming across a bit old-fashioned, a bit of a fuddy-duddy, maybe... Um, Vince McMahon was kind of thinking that actually he wouldn't mind if Bret Hart left, or perhaps it was Shawn Michaels. Maybe Shawn Michaels got in Vince's head and said we'd be better off without him. But either way, the contract offer was uh, withdrawn as Bret for the second time ducks below the ropes and Shawn takes a massive tumble um, to the outside. So Brett negotiated with WCW, was offered, of course, offered a contract, uh, masses uh, amounts of money, and Brett was set to leave. But there was just one small problem. Brett was the WWF champion. As Shawn Michaels lifts up Brett and puts him straight through the table with that capture style suplex. Brett Hart has been physically dominant in this match, but Shawn Michaels brings it right back to part with that maneuver. But... Bret Hart, through a mixture of anger and frustration, just wallops Shawn Michaels around the head with that steal of the belt. A no DQ match here. The referee staying well out of this one. And the plan was, or the booking plan was, that, that Bret Hart should lose the title to Shawn Michaels in Montreal, Canada. And Bret Hart said no. He didn't want to lose the belt in Canada. He didn't want to lose the belt to Shawn Michaels. He was kind of upset about the way Shawn Michaels had treated him. He was upset about the kind of the way the contract offer had been mucked about with. He did say, I'll lose the title um, another night. He did even say, I'll lose the belt to Shawn Michaels um, another night. But he said, I will not lose the title to Shawn Michaels in that match on that night in that country. Because obviously, Montreal being in Canada, Bret Hart, a very proud Canadian, he wanted to stay uh, exactly... Uh, he wanted to stay champion then, kind of, well, not necessarily stay champion, but he didn't want to lose that match that night. He said he'd lose the title before, he'd lose the title after, but Vince was having none of it. They needed Survivor Series to create a good buy rate. They wanted to take advantage of this actual animosity between the two because it was creating fantastic TV ratings. Um, well, not, uh, or certainly improved TV ratings. Um, and so they came to an impasse. They could not agree. Bret Hart saying, well, saying that he wasn't going to lose it, and actually his contract gave him um, a, a certain amount of creative control. We, the, 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 the letter of his contract said he was allowed to refuse. He wasn't breaking his contract conditions by refusing to lose the title that night. So, Vincent Brett had a discussion as Shawn Michaels powers back with a uh, slingshot suplex, his own, his old finisher, perhaps going for some sort of hole, but Bret Hart kicking him off, the excellence of execution, and the two men lock up. They've been through a lot already, through tables, through weapons, and Shawn Michaels just powered into the turnbuckle. And Bret and Vince came to an agreement. They said that the match was going to end with a DQ ending. Jim Neidhart or some other uh, family member was going to run in. Uh, the match would end on a DQ, and then uh, Bret Hart would either and surrender the title the next night by going to the ring and saying, you know, I give up the title, or would perhaps lose the title in, a, in the ring um, over the next few days. But Vince decided this was unacceptable. Uh, perhaps he was scared that uh, Brett would take the title to WCW, as producer had done with the women's title, and kind of disrespect it or throw it in the trash. Perhaps he... Um, was simply not willing to be told what to do by a member of his roster and wanted to re-exert his own authority. Perhaps he felt that Bret Hart was out of line for refusing to do what the booker said, or perhaps um, he was persuaded to do so by Shawn Michaels, Triple H, um, amongst others. But either way, what actually went down was that halfway through the match, which was a very, very good match, Bret Hart was put into his own hold the sharpshooter uh, and to the original plan Shawn Michaels was supposed to reverse the hold and, and counter out and the match was supposed to continue but that's not what happened Vince McMahon who you'll see in the bottom right hand corner of your screen there suddenly called for the bell as Bret Hart was put into the hold he claimed that Bret Hart had tapped out which of course he hadn't Earl Hebner who was the referee ran out of the building straight to his car Shawn Michaels picked up the belt in mock disgust although he has since admitted that he knew all about it beforehand Bret Hart 
realised what had happened and famously spat in the face of Vince McMahon live on um, international TV as uh, Shawn Michaels goes for revenge with the belt from earlier. Bret Hart seeing sense and withdrawing. And the pay-per-view ended with Bret Hart spelling out the letters of the WWF's nemesis, WCW, in the air. And since then, people have debated and, of course, will continue to debate um, who was to blame as Shawn Michaels just levels Bret Hart with that title belt. Was Bret Hart at fault for refusing to give up his title in a way that a leaving defending champion should? Was Vince to blame for screwing over one of his most trusted and reliable uh, wrestlers? Was Shawn Michaels to blame, putting his own interests first and um, getting in the ear of Vince? Was Triple H to blame, manipulating things behind the scenes? Who knows? There has been a, a, a somewhat reconciliation between uh, kind of all three men, although they don't appear to be close friends, but they have... Um, They've begun to get over it and shared a stage. And, of course, famously, Vince McMahon and Bret Hart had a terrible uh, WrestleMania match to try and get some more money out of the incident. But um, I think Bret Hart came out looking at, looked, came out of that looking worse than, than Vince did. Um, but either, whatever the truth of the matter, it is one of the most famous moments in wrestling history and will probably um, never be forgotten, or certainly within, within our lifetimes. And it came to define, unfortunately... Uh, Bret Hart's uh, WWF career. You can't really think about Bret Hart in the WWF without remembering how it ended and uh, what Vince did to him on the way out. As, Shawn Ma as Bret Hart rolls up Shawn Michaels unexpectedly for the 1-2. No, he counters it. And Shawn Michaels has got Bret Hart for the 2 and the 3. No, yes, no, no. Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart kicking out there but not able to defend himself from the almighty kick of Shawn Michaels. The crowd is on their feet. Shawn Michaels is feeling the intensity and levels Bret Hart with a flying forearm. Bret Hart back onto his feet. Atomic drop and then a body slam. Shawn Michaels has got the adrenaline pumping but instead of going for the flying elbow, of course, the infamous moment takes place. The sharpshooter is locked in. Bret Hart struggling, about to reverse but at the last possible second. Ring the effing bell, says Vince. Bret Hart cannot believe it. Shawn Michaels acting so wonderfully. What? No, I can't believe it. I knew nothing about it. And there, the loogie heard around the world as Vince McMahon is disgusted. And incidentally, v Vince, of course, was a commentator up to this point. This was the first night for many years he hadn't been seen on commentary and he would never return to that commentary table full time um, due to this incident. And it helped to launch the attitude heel character of Mr. McMahon versus Stone Cold but that my friends is a story for another time if you've enjoyed this little look back at the uh, famous um, Montreal Screwdrop then please give the video a like and do subscribe to the channel for wrestling action every Wednesday take care bye bye